Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America. In this video, we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Now let's begin. Barbara Taylor Bradford, the beloved British-American novelist, passed away on November 24th, at the age of 91, following a brief illness. Known for her unparalleled storytelling and the enduring appeal of her characters, she leaves behind a literary legacy that inspired millions worldwide. Born in Leeds, West Riding of Yorkshire, England, on April 10, 1933, Barbara's journey from humble beginnings to global fame mirrored the rise of the extraordinary women she wrote about. The youngest daughter of Frida and Winston Taylor, Barbara developed a passion for writing at a young age. By 10, she had earned her first paycheck for a story, a modest seven shillings and sixpence, which set her on a path that would redefine contemporary fiction. Her debut novel, A Woman of Substance, published in 1979, became one of the best-selling novels of all time, captivating readers with its tale of resilience, ambition, and triumph. The book sold over 30 million copies and established Barbara as a literary powerhouse. Over the course of her career, she authored 40 novels, all of which became bestsellers in both the UK and the United States. Her works often celebrated the strength of women, highlighting themes of perseverance, determination, and the pursuit of excellence. Barbara's unique ability to craft compelling stories extended beyond the written word, with 10 of her novels adapted into acclaimed television miniseries and movies. These adaptations, many produced by her husband, Robert E. Bradford, brought her stories to life and introduced her work to a broader audience. Beyond her literary achievements, Barbara's life was rich with accolades and recognition. She was appointed an officer of the Order of the British Empire by Queen Elizabeth II for her contributions to literature, and her manuscripts were honored alongside those of the Bronte sisters at the University of Leeds. Barbara's personal life, including her enduring marriage to Robert, who passed in 2019, was a testament to her values of love, loyalty, and family. Barbara Taylor Bradford's storytelling touched hearts across generations, making her a household name and a cherished figure in literature. Her legacy will continue to inspire readers and writers alike, ensuring her stories live on for years to come. Andy Paley, the immensely talented songwriter, record producer, composer, and multi-instrumentalist, passed away on November 20th at the age of 72 following a courageous battle with throat cancer. His extraordinary contributions to music, film, and television leave an indelible mark on the creative arts. Born on November 6, 1952, in Williamstown, Vermont, Andy grew up in a vibrant household, developing an early passion for music that shaped his future. Starting as a teenage drummer and singer in Albany area bands, Andy's journey soon led him to Boston, where he co-founded the Sidewinders and later formed the beloved power pop duo, the Paley Brothers, with his younger brother, Jonathan. Their harmonious melodies and infectious energy made them staples of the 1970s music scene. Beyond his own performances, Andy's brilliance shone in his collaborations and productions. As a producer at Sire Records, he worked with an eclectic mix of artists, from Jonathan Richmond to Jerry Lee Lewis and K.D. Lang, showcasing his versatility across genres. His creative partnership with Brian Wilson was especially notable, co-writing and producing songs for Wilson's 1988 solo comeback album and contributing to Wilson's unreleased projects. Wilson once described Paley as, the most frighteningly talented person I've met. Andy's talents extended into the realms of film and television, composing scores for films such as Dick Tracy and Traveler, and creating iconic music for animated series like The Ren and Stimpy Show, SpongeBob SquarePants, and Camp Laszlo. 
His contributions to SpongeBob SquarePants, including co-writing the It's a SpongeBob Christmas album with Tom Kenny, brought joy to millions of fans across generations. As a member of Tom Kenny and the High Seas and the leader of the Andy Paley Orchestra, Andy continued to inspire through live performances and stage productions. His work was infused with a deep love of music and an infectious enthusiasm that resonated with collaborators and audiences alike. Andy Paley's life was one of relentless creativity, marked by a profound impact on music and entertainment. His legacy will endure in the countless songs, scores, and memories he leaves behind, ensuring his spirit remains alive in the hearts of fans and artists worldwide. Chuck Woolery, the legendary game show host, entertainer, and musician, passed away at the age of 83 on November 23rd at his home in Texas. Over a career spanning six decades, Woolery became a beloved figure in American pop culture, bringing joy and entertainment to millions of households. Born on March 16, 1941 in Ashland, Kentucky, Chuck Woolery's career was as dynamic as it was diverse. After serving in the U.S. Navy, he began his journey in the music industry, first performing with the Bordermen and later finding success with the psychedelic pop duo, the Avant Garde, whose single Naturally Stoned became a top 40 hit. His foray into acting in television followed, where his charisma and quick wit made him a natural choice for hosting. Woolery was the original host of iconic game shows such as Wheel of Fortune, Love Connection, and Scrabble. He later charmed audiences on Greed and Lingo, becoming a household name synonymous with engaging and fun television. His signature style, equal parts warmth, humor, and professionalism, set a high standard for game show hosting. Beyond his work on television, Woolery had a lesser known but notable career in music. As a singer and songwriter, he recorded country music and even penned songs for legendary artists like Tammy Wynette. His multifaceted talents extended to radio and podcasts, where he shared his thoughts on current events and politics, making him a distinctive voice in American media. Chuck Woolery's personal life was filled with love, resilience, and dedication to his family. Married five times, he was a father to five children, Despite personal tragedies, including the loss of his son, Chad, Woolery remained a steadfast presence, deeply rooted in his faith and volunteer ministry. Chuck Woolery's legacy lies not only in the countless hours of entertainment he provided, but also in the warmth and humanity he brought to every project. His name became synonymous with optimism and connection, as he often reminded viewers, we'll be back in two and two. His contributions to television, music, and culture will remain cherished, ensuring his place in the hearts of fans for generations to come. David Harris, the talented and versatile actor best known for his iconic portrayal of Cochise in the 1979 cult classic, The Warriors, passed away at the age of 75 at his home in New York City after a courageous battle with cancer. His passing marks the end of a remarkable journey as an actor whose work resonated deeply with audiences across generations. Born on June 18, 1949 in New York City, David Harris cultivated his passion for acting from an early age, attending the esteemed High School of Performing Arts. His journey into the entertainment industry began with his powerful debut in the 1976 television film Judge Horton and the Scottsboro Boys, where he portrayed Haywood Patterson. This role set the stage for a career defined by a commanding presence and authentic performances. Harris rose to prominence as Cochise, the charismatic gang member in The Warriors. His portrayal brought strength and humanity to the character, cementing his place in cinematic history. The film, now a beloved cult classic, introduced him to a global audience and showcased his ability to bring depth to even the most hardened of roles. He later reprised his role as Cochise in the 2005 The Warriors video game, demonstrating his enduring connection to fans and his legacy. Beyond The Warriors, Harris appeared in numerous films, 
including Brubaker alongside Robert Redford, and had a long career portraying law enforcement and military personnel in various television series and films. In the 1990s, he shifted his focus to television, making memorable appearances on popular shows such as Law & Order, Special Victims Unit. His consistent and compelling work made him a sought-after actor for a wide array of roles. In addition to his professional accomplishments, Harris was a loving father and grandfather, whose presence was cherished by his family. His dedication to his craft and his ability to connect with audiences ensured that he left an indelible mark on both Hollywood and the hearts of fans worldwide. David Harris will be remembered for his commitment to storytelling, his powerful on-screen performances, and the authenticity he brought to every role. His legacy will continue to inspire and entertain as generations revisit his work and celebrate his extraordinary contributions to film and television. Liam Payne, the immensely talented singer, songwriter, and former member of the iconic boy band One Direction, passed away at the age of 31, following a tragic fall from a balcony in Buenos Aires, Argentina. His passing has left a profound void in the hearts of millions of fans worldwide and in the music industry, where his contributions were unparalleled. Born on August 29, 1993, in Wolverhampton, England, Liam first captured the public's attention on The X Factor in 2010. Though initially eliminated, fate intervened, and he was grouped with Harry Styles, Louis Tomlinson, Zayn Malik, and Niall Horan to form One Direction. Together, they became a global sensation, releasing chart-topping albums, including Up All Night and Midnight Memories, and selling over 70 million records worldwide. Liam's talent for crafting melodies and lyrics, coupled with his rich vocals, played a pivotal role in shaping the band's sound and legacy. After One Direction's hiatus in 2016, Liam embarked on a successful solo career, debuting with the hit single, Strip That Down, which showcased his evolution as an artist. His debut album, LP1, demonstrated his versatility, blending pop and R&B influences. He collaborated with celebrated artists like Rita Ora and Jay Balvin, further cementing his reputation as a dynamic performer. His recent release, Teardrops, resonated deeply with fans, becoming a poignant tribute to his artistry. Beyond his music, Liam was a philanthropist and advocate for mental health, supporting causes like the Trussell Trust and UNICEF. He raised awareness about food insecurity, funded hundreds of thousands of meals during the COVID-19 pandemic, and tirelessly championed youth cancer research through his work with Trekstock. His generosity extended to fans, often quietly supporting individuals in need. Liam's journey was not without challenges. He faced personal struggles with mental health and substance abuse, candidly sharing his experiences to inspire others. Despite these battles, he remained a beacon of resilience and creativity, leaving behind a legacy of empathy and connection. Liam Payne will be remembered not only for his contributions to music, but also for his kindness, humor, and determination to uplift those around him. His impact will endure through his songs and the countless lives he touched. Susie Burning, an iconic figure in the world of professional golf, passed away at the age of 83 at her home in Indio, California, after a battle with lung cancer. Burning's extraordinary achievements on the golf course and her impactful career as a mentor and teacher leave an enduring legacy in the sport. Born Suzanne Maxwell on July 22, 1941, in Pasadena, California, Susie discovered golf relatively late at the age of 15, after her family moved to Oklahoma City. However, her natural talent was immediately evident as she won three consecutive Oklahoma State High School championships and later became the first woman to receive a golf scholarship at Oklahoma City University, where she competed on the men's team, an early sign of her trailblazing spirit. Burning joined the LPGA Tour in 1964 and quickly made her mark, earning Rookie of the Year honors. 
Over her career, she amassed 11 victories, including four major championships, the 1965 Women's Western Open and three U.S. Women's Open titles in 1968, 1972, and 1973. Her ability to shine on golf's biggest stages set her apart, and her induction into the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2022 cemented her place among the sport's legends. Known for her precision and resilience, Burning remained a prominent figure on the LPGA Tour for decades, even playing alongside her daughter Robin Doctor in 1989, becoming the first mother-daughter duo to compete in the same LPGA event. After retiring from competitive play, she dedicated herself to teaching, sharing her knowledge and passion for the game with a new generation of players. Her work at the Nicholas Flick Golf Academy and her roles at the Reserve Club in Palm Springs and Maroon Creek Country Club in Aspen showcased her commitment to nurturing talent and growing the sport. Beyond the fairways, Susie was a devoted mother to her daughters, Robin and Cindy and her personal journey inspired countless individuals, both within and outside the world of golf. She overcame challenges with grace and left an indelible mark on the sport as a champion, pioneer, and mentor. Susie Burning will be remembered not only for her remarkable accomplishments, but also for her kindness, humility, and unwavering dedication to the game she loved. Her legacy will continue to inspire future generations of golfers to chase greatness with the same determination and integrity she exemplified. Pete Rose, legendary baseball player and manager, passed away at the age of 83 at his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, due to hypertensive and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Known as Charlie Hustle, Rose's remarkable career, marked by unmatched passion and grit, has left an indelible mark on the sport of baseball. Born on April 14, 1941 in Cincinnati, Ohio, Rose began his journey in the game he loved with the Cincinnati Reds. From his MLB debut in 1963 to his retirement in 1986, Rose became the embodiment of hustle and determination. A switch hitter with a relentless drive, he holds some of the most coveted records in baseball history, including all-time hits, 4,256, games played, 3,562, and at-bats, 14,053. These achievements are a testament to his unparalleled work ethic and dedication to the game. Rose's illustrious career saw him win three World Series championships, the National League Rookie of the Year Award, 1963, and the NL MVP Award, 1973. He was a 17-time All-Star in an astounding five positions, showcasing his versatility and team-first mentality. As a key figure in the Cincinnati Reds' Big Red Machine, he helped define an era of dominance in the 1970s, contributing to back-to-back -back World Series victories in 1975 and 1976. Though his career was clouded by a gambling scandal that led to a lifetime ban from baseball in 1989, Rose's on-field contributions remain unmatched. His tenacity and love for the game earned him the admiration of fans and players alike. Despite the controversies, Rose remained a central figure in baseball's history and continued to inspire through his presence at events and in popular culture. Off the field, Rose was a devoted father and an active figure in public life, known for his interactions with fans at autograph shows and his candid reflections on his career. His legacy as a player who gave his all every time he stepped onto the field endures as a model for aspiring athletes. Pete Rose's name will forever evoke images of passion and perseverance. His records, achievements, and indomitable spirit serve as a reminder of his contributions to the sport. Baseball has lost one of its most unforgettable figures, but Rose's impact on the game will continue to resonate for generations to come. John Ashton, beloved actor known for his memorable roles in Beverly Hills Cop, Some Kind of Wonderful, and Midnight Run, passed away at the age of 76 in Fort Collins, Colorado, after a battle with cancer. 
a versatile performer whose characters ranged from gruff detectives to tender-hearted fathers, Ashton leaves behind a legacy of laughter, heartfelt performances, and cinematic excellence. Born on February 22, 1948, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Ashton pursued his passion for acting with determination. He attended Defiance College in Ohio before earning his degree from the University of Southern California's School of Theater. From his early days in local theater to his breakout roles in iconic films, Ashton's commitment to his craft was evident in every performance. Ashton became a household name in the 1980s, starring as Detective Sergeant John Taggart, alongside Eddie Murphy in the Beverly Hills Cop series. His dry humor and impeccable chemistry with co-stars elevated the films into classics of the action comedy genre. Ashton's role in Midnight Run as a rival bounty hunter showcased his knack for blending humor and intensity, further solidifying his place in Hollywood. Beyond these blockbuster hits, Ashton touched audiences with his heartfelt performance in Some Kind of Wonderful, where he played a supportive and wise father. His extensive filmography included roles in Gone Baby Gone, Instinct, and Little Big League, as well as memorable appearances on television in Columbo, Dallas, and Police Squad. Ashton's commitment to his craft extended beyond acting. He was passionate about connecting with fans, often expressing his willingness to revisit beloved roles, as he did in 2024's Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. His humility and humor made him a cherished figure in the entertainment industry. Off-screen, Ashton was a devoted family man. He is survived by his daughter, son, and stepchildren, as well as countless fans who admired his work. His resilience and kindness were as evident in his personal life as they were in his professional endeavors. John Ashton's passing marks the end of an era, but his legacy will live on through his unforgettable performances. He will be remembered not only for his talent, but also for the warmth and humanity he brought to every role. Rest in peace, John Ashton. You will be missed but never forgotten. Chris Searle, the esteemed British television presenter, reporter, and actor, passed away at the age of 81 after suffering a stroke. Searle's warm demeanor, quick wit, and talent for connecting with audiences made him one of the most beloved figures in British broadcasting. Born on July 13, 1943, in Henley's, Bristol, Searle's path to a celebrated career in media began with his education at Clifton College and Trinity College, Dublin, where he studied modern languages. His mastery of communication and his vibrant personality would later become hallmarks of his career. Searle first gained public recognition as a presenter on the long-running BBC series That's Life, where his charm and relatability resonated with viewers. He became further known for In at the Deep End, a show in which he and Paul Heine took on professional challenges without prior experience. Searle's ability to embrace these challenges with humor and grace endeared him to audiences. Throughout the 1980s, Searle presented several popular BBC programs, including Windmill, Points of View, and The Computer Program, which introduced viewers to emerging technologies. He brought intelligence and curiosity to these shows, fostering a sense of accessibility and enthusiasm for his topics. On radio, Searle was the long-running host of Pick of the Week from 1991 to 1998, showcasing his versatility as a broadcaster. Beyond his professional life, Searle's commitment to his community was evident in his work as honorary president of the Bristol Hospital Broadcasting Service. His dedication to bringing joy and information to hospital patients highlighted his genuine care for people. Searle's personal life was marked by his deep love for family. He was married twice, first to Anna Southall, with whom he had two children, and later to television producer Ali Fraser, with whom he shared three children. His family and friends remember him as a devoted and loving father and partner. Chris Searle's legacy is one of joy, curiosity, and connection. 
his contributions to British television and radio left an indelible mark on the industry, and his warmth will continue to be felt by all who had the privilege of watching or working alongside him. He will be deeply missed but fondly remembered. David Graham, the cherished English actor and voice artist, passed away at the remarkable age of 99. Known for his extraordinary versatility and a career that spanned nearly eight decades, Graham's work left an indelible mark on television, film, and theater. Born on July 11, 1925, in London, Graham's journey into the arts began after his service as a radar mechanic in the Royal Air Force during World War II. He trained at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in New York under Sanford Meisner, setting the stage for an illustrious career. Upon returning to England, Graham became a distinguished figure in theater, eventually sharing the stage with icons like Laurence Olivier. Graham's talent for voice work found a perfect outlet through his collaborations with Jerry Anderson, bringing to life beloved characters such as Brains, Parker, and Gordon Tracy in Thunderbirds. His performance as Parker, inspired by a real-life waiter, became one of Anderson's favorites, cementing Graham as a cornerstone of British pop culture. His iconic voice work also included roles in Doctor Who, where he voiced the Daleks, a hallmark of the series' early years, and later reprised this role for the show's 60th anniversary. Fans of Peppa Pig knew him as the endearing Grandpa Pig, a role he lovingly played well into his later years. Beyond his work in iconic series, Graham's talent extended to live-action performances, including City of Death in Doctor Who and the groundbreaking 1984 Super Bowl commercial for Apple. His portrayal of Edward Elgar in Stirring the Spirit and Albert Einstein in a BBC docudrama showcased his ability to delve into complex historical characters with depth and dignity. Even in his later years, Graham continued to captivate audiences, reprising his roles in Thunderbirds Are Go and remaining a beloved figure in the world of animation and voice acting. His enduring legacy is one of dedication, creativity, and an uncanny ability to bring characters to life with warmth and precision. David Graham's contributions to entertainment will continue to inspire for generations. His unmatched talent and beloved characters remind us of his extraordinary ability to make stories come alive. He will be profoundly missed but forever celebrated. Lex Marinos, the celebrated Australian actor, director, radio personality, and voice artist, passed away at the age of 75, following a two-decade battle with leukemia. Surrounded by family and the timeless music of Bob Dylan, he left this world peacefully, choosing the moment with characteristic grace and thoughtfulness. Born on February 1, 1949, in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, Marinos was the son of a Greek immigrant father and a mother whose lineage reflected the rich tapestry of Australian multiculturalism. His childhood, steeped in the vibrant traditions of Greek-Australian life, set the stage for a lifelong dedication to the arts and storytelling. A graduate of the University of New South Wales with a Bachelor of Arts in Drama, Marinos quickly emerged as a formidable talent across multiple mediums. Marinos rose to national prominence with his role as Bruno, the lovable and relatable Italian son-in-law in the 1980s sitcom Kingswood Country. His performance brought humor and warmth to Australian living rooms while exploring themes of cultural identity and family dynamics in a lighthearted yet poignant way. Beyond acting, he was a trailblazer in Australian radio, co-hosting programs on 2JJ and later gracing audiences with his engaging presence on ABC local radio, including his beloved show Late Night Legends. His contributions extended well beyond entertainment. Marinos was a vocal advocate for the arts and cultural development in Australia, serving as deputy chair of the Australia Council and supporting community cultural initiatives. In 1994, he was awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia for his service to the performing arts. And in 2001, he received the Centenary Medal for his continued impact on Australian culture. 
Marinos's diverse career included acclaimed performances in projects such as The Slap, for which he and the cast received the Equity Award for Outstanding Ensemble Performance in a television movie or miniseries. His legacy as an artist, mentor, and advocate for cultural expression is indelible. Lex Marinos will be remembered not only for his remarkable talent, but also for his dedication to fostering inclusivity and creativity in the arts. His humor, warmth, and passion for storytelling enriched countless lives, leaving an enduring imprint on Australia's cultural landscape. Bill Jorgensen, the trailblazing news anchor who redefined television journalism, passed away at the age of 96 in Franklin, North Carolina. Known as a pioneer of the primetime newscast, Jorgensen left an indelible mark on the field of broadcast news. Born in Park Ridge, Illinois, Jorgensen began his career in Cleveland, Ohio, before being recruited to New York City to launch WNEW-TV's 10 O'Clock News in 1967. At a time when no other commercial television station offered a primetime newscast, Jorgensen's authoritative presence and distinctive style set a new standard. His calm yet commanding delivery, described by critics as authority without affectation, captivated audiences and established the 10 o'clock news as a trusted source of information for millions of viewers. His iconic sign-off, I'm Bill Jorgensen, thanking you for your time this time till next time, became a hallmark of his broadcasts. Jorgensen's dedication to his craft extended to his meticulous attention to detail. Known for his use of the teleprompter and unwavering on-camera focus, he projected confidence and reliability. Behind the scenes, his uncompromising commitment to quality sometimes led to clashes with management, but his brilliance in front of the camera was undeniable. In 1979, Jorgensen transitioned to WPIX-TV, where he continued to innovate. He co-anchored Action News and was instrumental in launching the Independent Network News, a groundbreaking primetime national newscast that brought global and national news to independent stations across the U.S. Jorgensen's leadership in this endeavor expanded the reach of independent journalism during a critical time in the industry's evolution. After retiring in 1987, Jorgensen spent his later years in Florida and North Carolina, enjoying a well-earned respite after decades of service to the field of journalism. His voice, once described as fate reaching out to you, resonated with a generation of viewers, and his contributions laid the foundation for many of the standards and practices in broadcast news today. Bill Jorgensen's legacy lives on in the countless journalists he inspired and the viewers he informed. His pioneering work and dedication to journalistic excellence will be remembered as milestones in the history of television news. Breaking news of the day. News one. Mick Jagger shows no signs of slowing down as he takes center stage during the Rolling Stones' latest tour, Hackney Diamonds. At 81 years old, the iconic frontman continues to electrify audiences recently sharing insights into his enduring energy and plans for the future in a candid interview. It took a couple of shows to get into the groove, but now we're into it, Jagger said with his trademark humor, adding that performing at 81 feels no different than performing at 78. Joined by bandmates Keith Richards, 81, and Ronnie Wood, 78, the Stones are rocking across the U.S. with talks of expanding the tour internationally. Jagger also teased that the band has enough material for another album following the success of Hackney Diamonds. The secret to Jagger's vitality? Regular exercise, dance rehearsals, and a little help from good genes. My father was a fitness instructor and lived to 93, he shared, crediting his two weekly dance sessions and gym workouts for keeping him stage ready. For Jagger, the real fuel is his love for performing. You get this back and forth with the audience. It gives you a lot more energy, he explained. With potential guest appearances from stars like Paul McCartney and Lady Gaga, fans have plenty to look forward to as the Rolling Stones continue to prove their timeless rock legends.
News 2. Angelina Jolie has become a symbol of strength and resilience through her courageous health decisions. The Maleficent actress first made waves in 2013 when she underwent a preventative double mastectomy after discovering she carried the BRCA1 gene, which significantly increased her risk of breast cancer. Jolie's decision was deeply personal, influenced by the loss of her mother, Marceline Bertrand, to cancer at just 56 years old. I feel empowered by making a strong choice that in no way diminishes my femininity, Jolie shared. Her proactive approach reduced her breast cancer risk from 87% to just 5%, offering her family peace of mind. In 2016, during her highly publicized divorce from Brad Pitt, Jolie faced another health challenge, Bell's palsy, a condition that temporarily weakens facial muscles. She attributed the episode to stress and has since spoken openly about the physical toll that emotional struggles can take on the body. Despite these challenges, Jolie remains steadfast in her focus on her health and family. I have found strength in making bold decisions for my future, she said. Her journey serves as an inspiring reminder of the power of taking control of one's health and prioritizing well-being.